Now, we know Jesus knows what we need, right? So we know he knows. So why did he ask Bartimaeus? Well, you know why? Y'all look at him. He asked because he wants to hear us say it. And Bartimaeus didn't say, please heal me or please bless me. He said, I want to see. He got to the point. He was specific about what he wanted. He was honest and he was specific. And Jesus said, go, your faith has healed you. Now, folks, Bartimaeus is a good example of how we should always tell Jesus exactly what we need, talk to God specifically in our prayers about what we need. Even though he knows, he wants to hear it from us. And he wants that, that connection and communication with us about what we need. And just as it says in Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything, pray about everything, the specifics. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He's done for you. So when you have a need in your life, don't be shy. You just be just like a baby. You just cry out to Jesus. Just tell Him what you need and be specific and He will always be there for you. That's our thing. Heavenly Father, we know that you love your children and want what's best for them. Help us remember that we don't need to worry about anything. All we need to do is to speak up, just like our man, and ask you, in Jesus' name, amen. <coughs>
Well, I forgot to announce one thing a minute ago, and I got in trouble for it, but, but uh, if you're a visitor, we do have the visitor cards this week, and they're actually out, whereas last week when I announced it, they weren't. But this week they are. They're back there on the back table. Information. So if you're a visitor and you want to, if you'd like to be reached out to again or whatever, please fill that out and drop it in the offering bucket, which is the little church house there on the table. And I think that's it. I'm, of course, my visitors, my mom and dad are here today. So. <laughs> I'll make too much of it, but I want to it. <laughs> but anyway, so they're here and a bunch of other visitors that made a couple this morning. We're thankful for each and every person who comes through the door. And we just pray that you feel welcome here. Because that's what we want. If you don't feel welcome, please let me know. And we'll do what we can to make you feel welcome. But anyway, more important than feeling welcome is to experience Jesus Christ and to know Christ. And that is the purpose of everything we do. And that's why today, as difficult as this message is, here out of Romans 13, and Paul speaking about submission to authorities, submitting to government in a way, it's difficult. It's a tough topic to preach on. Because I don't like a lot of the government going on myself. But this is something we have to talk about, so it's tough. So I want to read the text before I get into anything today. Now, it's a little different how I normally do it, but I just want to get it out there. And we'll see what Paul says about it. And he says, Romans 13, 1 through 7, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant. Remember that. God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. They are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Now all of that we could give a big amen to on a big chunk of it. Of course, everybody's favorite part is pay taxes, right? Everybody loves that part. But the thing is, the taxes that are taken when taken correctly fund the government that funds the people who take care of us. We've seen the defund the police movement going on. Well, that is just stupidity. And the taxes taken pay the police officers' paycheck. And many of them don't get paid enough. Matter of fact, there's a lot of them that need to be paid more. Almost all of them. It's just like this meme I've seen going around. It has a picture that says, bad police officers, and it has like two or three. And it has good officers. It has a whole slug of people. And it has the same thing down here on bad ministers. There's a few, a handful of them, which I think it's a little bit off there. There's a whole lot of bad ministers out there these days, more so than there used to be, and a whole handful of good ones. Then it has good politicians. There's like one or two, and a whole bunch of bad ones. Over there. And that's about the truth. And that's where we struggle with our governing authorities being in the submission that Paul says here. But the thing is, as we'll get into it in a second, there's things we need to know about government, the government that's over us, the government that we have, wherever you may be living, which of course we're in America, and we have a republic. Many people don't want to call it that, but it is a republic. We're a constitutional republic. So just think and remember that. But we need to know what our government is about. But it's just like the story of this man discussing the fragility of marriages with his girlfriend. And he posed the following question to her. What if you wake up one morning and don't love me anymore? She immediately responded, there's always obedience. And that's the thing. We may not love the government that we have at the time, the governing authority, the people in power at this time frame that have been put there by the people. 
But the thing is, there are certain aspects of this obedience that Paul is talking about. We have to remember, at the time of this writing, there was a man named Nero, pretty much running the Roman Empire. Nero was very evil and wicked. He was utilizing Christians a lot of times as human torches to light the streets of Rome. He had expelled many Romans, I mean, Christians from Rome, for disobedience and made up disobedience some of us. He was a wicked, evil man. And Paul was writing this to the church at Rome, telling them that these guys are there for a reason. We don't understand the reasonings of why people are in positions of power. Some of them get put in power, or in those positions where what in the world is going on. That's what Paul is saying. We may not like it. We may not want it. But they're there because God has somehow allowed them to be there. And we say somehow because we don't get it on a lot of things. We don't like it, but they're there. They've been voted in for a reason. Some of them took power by force. Some took power through <coughs> executive fiat that we see happen. But the thing is, what we need to know is we need to be obedient. By obedient, I'm not meaning an aspect of we're just down, we're cowed down, we're not looking at things, we're just letting everything slide. We're doing all this, but it's a type of submission to where we obey the law of the land. You may not like to wear a seatbelt, you may want to drive 85. Well, I know a guy sitting around there that'd love to pull you over for doing that. <laughs> you may not love to pull you over, but it's his job. But the thing is, we obey those laws, one, because we don't want to face the wrath that's going to come with it. I don't know what a speed ticket goes for these days, but I don't want to pay hundreds of dollars for something I could have avoided by not driving over the speed limit. I may not particularly like a seatbelt, but I wear it because I don't want that ticket. The thing is, there's laws that are instituted for protection and reason. So we obey them. But we need to understand that some of the governing authorities that are in place have instituted things that are not right. So that's why I said we need to know our own government, what it is. When you understand the government you're under, Paul is saying here, they were under a tyrant. This guy was ruling by power and force and terror and harm and threat of death upon people. And he's telling you to be in submission to that. So you need to understand what you're under. It's the same with us here, where we live now. We have a specific structure of our government is to be run. And to be in submission to the governing authorities, you need to understand what your governing authority powers are. Because if we're just submitting to things that are not under the government, just somebody saying it, then we're not properly submitting. We're allowing things to happen that are not correct. And we see the Apostle Paul, who wrote this, spending two years of his life fighting in the authority because he was a Roman citizen. We read that in Acts. Paul was falsely accused of causing a riot in the temple. They said he brought in a Gentile into the inner part of the temple, which he did not do. So that was the Jews there in Jerusalem trying to get him in a lot of trouble. Well, Paul is bound and all that, and they're fixing to flog him. And he says, is it lawful to whip a Roman citizen? He knew his law. He knew the governing bill. So he was able to not be whipped, although he was in prison and held and all of this stuff, and he finally appealed to Caesar. And that's how he winds up in Rome. But he used the system because he knew the system. But we also need to look at the Apostle Paul, what he wrote in 2 Corinthians 11, of all the times he was whipped, all the times he was stoned, all the times he was in prison, all the times all these things happened. Some of it was because of the governing authority, and some of it was, again, back against the Jewish officials that did not like the fact that he was preaching Christ crucified. But he preached Christ, and he knew the consequences. So that's what we need to understand when we're facing this, when we're going into stuff with the authorities over us. God's will is for us to be obedient. And the reason why we need to be obedient is because our fact of that we need to be able to spread Christ easier. That is our main goal and purpose as believers. Once you are saved, we need to be as the Apostle Paul was. Matter of fact, he wrote many times, Imitate me as I imitate Christ. What did Paul do? He traveled and went all over the place preaching Christ. 
to everybody. It didn't matter who it was, he preached to Christ. And we also see in the early chapters of Acts with John and Peter, when they were preaching and going, they were imprisoned and held, told, you are not to preach Christ, you are not to do this anymore. And they said, well, it's better for us to obey God than man. Because they were being ordered not to preach. If we come into a situation like that, our submission is to God above all. And God says you are to share, you are to preach, you are to go, you are to do just as Paul did, just as the others did. We take the message of Christ regardless, but you need to be prepared for the consequences that come. Because you may be in prison, you may be beat, you may receive multiple afflictions in your life for doing that. But just as Peter and John were when they were whipped and released, they walked out proclaiming the fact in joy that they were counted worthy to suffer for his name. And that's how we need to be when we do this. Because we're living in a world that has gone crazy. Early. But we see also back in the writings in Ecclesiastes where he says there is nothing new under the sun. What has been is what will be and what was, what will be is what was. There is nothing new under the sun. So the craziness that's going on, we just see it a lot easier because we have these devices that you can watch something from all over the world and you see things happening in real time, whereas that never was able to be done before. So the world seems a whole lot crazier than it ever was, whereas it's, there's more people, but it's the same craziness, just more people do it. But the problem that we have with it is there's too many people out there running amok, living their lives for themselves, not under the governing authorities. Because even in evil, wicked regimes, if people obeyed the law, there was no trouble. Of course, those kind of regimes were very forceful. Step out of line, you know, you might just jaywalk and get shot. But what we need to understand is even with those, there was law in order. Because without some kind of government, as Paul is saying here, those who resist are resisting God. He has established order for a reason. We read back in Genesis chapter 9, where he says, if you shed man's blood, then by man your blood shall be shed. It was an institution of government right there. And we see that carried on all throughout scripture where there's a governing authority. As I've said before up here, God is a God of order, not chaos. When we don't have some form of government, we're living in complete and total chaos at all times. Just like in Judges, 17.6, and it's in there a few more times, where it says, In those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. See, if there's not some kind of law and order, some kind of structure, keeping things in check, that's what we get. People doing what is right in their own eyes. And I want to tell you, what may be right to me is not right to you. And, and a prime example Walk by Best Buy and there's this real nice TV. Well, it may be right for me to go in there and take it, but for the owner of that store, it is not right. And without any kind of governing authority or laws of the land, who can enforce that? Nobody. It just turns into a free for all. You do what you want, and we've seen a lot of that here lately happen in this nation where there are laws that people are just going and doing what they want because they don't care about the laws. Now one thing we have to understand is Paul is writing this to believers. We can't expect unbelievers, people who are not saved, who have not believed in Christ, to live in a certain way. So when we see these people living that way and behaving that way and doing these wicked evil things, that is why we need to be obedient under the laws and live in a way that is above reproach and faithfully serve the Lord. Because as it says here, God is the one that appointed this. God is the one that we are following. But you heard me hammer on the point of servant in chapter 4. That word is the same word that we get the term deacon for. Diaconus. 
So it's a servant. Just as a deacon is the servant in the church, as you read in Scripture, the deacon serves the body, serves the people. The government is in place to serve the people. No matter what form of government it is, they're there to serve people. That's why it says, if you do good, you are not needing to be afraid, because he bears the sword. He bears the sword against the evil and the wicked. That's how it's supposed to be. The ones who do wrong are supposed to have it. You remember in the persistent widow who kept going to the unjust judge. He didn't want to help her, but he finally got wore down and did it. He was unjust. He was crooked. He was twisted. He was evil. But he was the governing authority of that time, and she kept going, and he finally answered and did what was supposed to be done. All right? So that's how government is supposed to be. They are supposed to be the servant of the people. And when we live under that aspect, things are different. Whether they're truly servant or not, the thing is, we need to know that we are here to serve the Lord and help other people understand Him. That is our main purpose. So when we are living in obedience to the law, we're living rationally. We're three and four because we are serving the Lord. We are obeying Him. But again, I said we need to know our government. Because when we know our government, then we can start doing things to try to change people that way. But the thing is, we can't start instituting laws that are based off of Christianity for people that don't understand it. See, that's where the mind of the lost, they don't comprehend it. For the cross is folly to them. They don't get it. That's why people who are pro-abortion do not understand those of us who are so against it. They don't see that it's wrong. They're living in a lost mindset, living as the world, serving the God of this world. You've heard me say many times, which is in Scripture, which is Satan. Satan is the authority right now of the world. That's why we have so much corrupt government. That's why there's so much wickedness, so much evil, and people are depraved. We desire evil. That's why it's so difficult for us sometimes to be in proper submission, because we still are fighting that old flesh. Even though we are a new creation, we are a new man in Christ, we still struggle with it. We sometimes want to fight and balk and just say, I'm done. And there is a time and place for that. But right now, in this subjection, we're avoiding God's wrath too. Because when you're disobedient, you will suffer. Go and drive drunk several times. Get in a car wreck while drunk. What's going to happen? You're going to get drunk. And verbally, you don't hurt somebody else in the process. Rightly so. It's order. There needs to be order. Even if it is a corrupt order, there's order in a govern governing body. We even see it in communism. As horrific as it is, there is order. And it's horrible. I mean, the people are starving and dying. A lot of them are, but there's still order. There are things happening. When we start trying to serve out our own purposes constantly and continually and not seeking to understand and help others, we have trouble. That's the main point Paul is getting at here. When we're obedient and in submission, we are free to fear God and respect His authority. But also, we're more free to serve God because we're not stuck in a prison somewhere. Now, that may happen. It may come eventually here in America to where that happens to Christians who stand for truth. Paul was in prison a few times and finally became in prison. We saw, like I said, in the book of Acts, James and Peter and John, all of them go to prison. Many of them went to prison. Through church tradition, I don't know how true it is on how all the disciples and all of them were killed, but regardless, let's just say a portion of them were killed for being faithful to Christ. So be it. That's where we need to stand because God is our ultimate authority. But if we can, we need to fly under the radar as much as possible because when we're free to travel and free to move, we can reach more people for Christ. That's what Paul is getting at, this freedom here. When we do this, when we serve this way, because this section here in verse, chapter 13 is verse 12, I mean chapter 12 before it, he's talking about let love be genuine. 
abhor what is evil. And then he follows it up with love again of one another. And he tells us here in chapter 13 that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Reiterating and quoting back what Christ said was the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God, your heart, soul, mind, strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. When we love our neighbors, we are sharing Christ with them. And when we're sharing Christ with them in freedom, because we're not in jail, we're not bound, we're not locked up by the governing authorities, we're able to love even more. I know it's hard and it's difficult on some of this stuff to do, because the government is pretty corrupt. It's real corrupt. Our government is not even following what our governing authority is supposed to do. As I said, we're a constitutional republic. If they followed the Constitution, there'd be a lot of things totally different. But they have a tendency to rewrite the Constitution for how they want it. And that's where we have a struggle. Because we know the law. So, in submitting to governing authorities, our governing authority is the Constitution. So if there's something that has not been passed and amended in correctly, then it's not a law. And we don't have to follow it. We need to submit to the authority. But if it's a false authority, as we saw with churches being shuttered through this pandemic in certain areas, especially in California, and we saw guys out there, and I don't agree with the majority of his theology, but John MacArthur stood up and said, we are not shutting this church anymore. So he was the beginner, and many others started standing up and doing the same thing. They were trying to illegally shut stuff down. They knew the law, they stood for the law, and guess what? They won. So there's times where we have to stand up, but we need to know our own law to do so. We need to be knowledgeable in what our laws read. And when we do that, we can faithfully stand and do it the correct way. We don't have to be loud. We don't have to be violent. We don't have to be angry. We don't have to break things to make things happen. But we stand with the law, and when we stand with the law that is correct, and then we obediently serve Christ, to trust us, we reach a lot of people. That's what Paul is saying. Submission, the proper submission is understanding what you're submitting to. If you don't understand what you're submitting to, then you've submitted to a false thing, and that is not true submission. It's like being a Christian. Once you believe in Christ, once you have believed in what he did, in his death, burial, resurrection, has accomplished all that is necessary for your salvation, and you have believed in him, then, after that, is when we start submitting to him because we start knowing who he is. We start knowing who God the Father is. We start understanding what it means to be a Christ follower. But if you start trying to submit to him before you have believed in him, so as to believe in him, then you are submitting in a false way because you don't even understand what it is you're supposed to submit to. And it's the same thing with God. If we start submitting and doing things without understanding what it is we're submitting to, it's not a true submission because we don't even know what it is we're submitting to. So what Paul is saying is submit to them and pay taxes to those who taxes are owed, revenue to revenue and respect to respect because things have to be funded. And I want to tell you, our taxation is nothing compared to what was happening in the town back then. So I don't like taxes either. But what he's saying is be honest. Don't try to lie about faith. Because we're believers. When we are honest, even in the fact that it's miserable to do it, but we're honest, people see this, and people will go, there's something different about those Christians. They don't like it. They think it's robbery. But they're being honest. Even in the face of that. And it's his Chuck Swindoll said, he was about when he was in the Marines while serving in the military, it wasn't the fact that he respected the officer at all, but it was the uniform. And I know that's difficult too, to give respect to. There's some people out there that you want to just frame. 
Trust me. That's why I said this has been such a hard message for me this week because every bone in my body wants to rebel at a lot of things. As many of you see on my Facebook, some of the stuff I share, I want to rebel. And I will rebel when it's right. I will take a stand for Jesus Christ because ultimately, this world be day. Christ is going to go judge me one day for what I did for him here. At the judgment seat before him. And I want to know when I stand before him that I served him over men. That I served him over fear. That I served him regardless. And I want to know that because of what I did, there's going to be less people going to the great white throne judgment. They'll be standing at the judgment seat of Christ with me and others like you. That's what we need to desire. So our government, yes, we need to know it. We need to understand it. And we need to be in submission to authorities to a degree. But what we need to be, for sure, ultimately is in submission to Christ and seeking to reach the lost. Just as this series started, God desires all men to be saved. That's his desire. How does that desire get fulfilled? Through us serving him and reaching people, trying to show them who Jesus Christ is and why there is salvation in no other name, no other person, no other anything but him. That's our purpose. And if we're fighting the government more than we're serving the Lord and going and trying to reach people, then what good are we doing? That is the main point of what Paul was saying. Have that obedience because it's better to serve Christ and seek people to be saved than to be fighting the government all the time. That's what we need to do. It's not that we want to be in submission. It's not that we want to be beat down and pushed around. But I'd rather be beat down, pushed around, and whipped and have all kinds of my own personal freedoms taken away than still be able to reach people. Christ. I'm not saying we need to give up freedoms because we have a certain structure here. But if I was to lose all freedoms in this world, this world is nothing. It is just where we're residing right now. Christ is more important. And people coming to know Christ is more important. We're here right now in a terrible time in this world. It's going crazy. We basically have a regime taking over in America in a lot of ways. We have ways of fixing that as long as we stay true to our governing system correctly. Just Sharon said last tweet when I was talking about this message. So I guess we need to be in submission, but we also need to get out and vote. And that's the truth. That's how we change it. And we just keep reaching people for Christ. The more people that believe in Christ, the more people that are saved, the more people start living for Christ. And the more people that start living for Christ, the more that things start getting set in a God-honoring way in the government. That's what Paul is getting at. We reach people that way because of love. And that's love. Christ is love. Through him and reaching people for him is love. So when we do disobey, we need to gauge what we do against what God's word says. That is our standard, not our emotions. If our emotions lead the way, guess what? We're going to be in a horrible condition. We need to gauge it against God's word, not our emotions. Serve God, love people, reach people for Christ. And if we're locked up, beaten, or killed, what good have we done? You may go out of martyr. But 90% of us are nobodies to the world. Well, actually, pretty much like outside of our majority circle, we're not known by very many people. So if we go out as a martyr, what have we accomplished? We may strengthen a few. We may embolden a few. But the fact of the matter is, we can probably reach more if we just stay calm, cool, collected, and reach people for Christ. He was commissioned by the Lord. He knew he was going to be jailed. He went anyway because that was what he was told to do by the Lord. He was an apostle. He had revelation from Christ. We have God's word to guide us now that he wrote and other men have wrote. We faithfully follow the Lord through what we see in here. And one thing we see is we need to have submission 
So we need to relax a little bit, trust the Lord, trust Christ. Because one thing that we need to understand is even if the party we want wins an election, hope in man is misplaced hope. Our only hope is in God. And the only way we can rest in that is by putting our faith in Christ. Because one day this old world, as it says in Scripture here in Second Peter, the elements will be melted. All will be burnt, and it will be completely new. Every day will be new heavens, new earth. Fully, not restored, but completely new. That's the way I read it, that's the way I understand it. It will be totally new. And until then, we're in this fallen, depraved world. And our only hope is in Jesus Christ. But there are governing authorities over us that we need to be in some form of submission to until that day. Because when Christ comes, he's going to rule the rod of iron. And it's going to be different, it's going to be perfect, it's going to be right. But until that day, we need to faithfully serve, love the Lord, love people, reach people with Christ, and quit worrying so much. Because God is in control. And his will for us is to be obedient to him and what he has established. As tough as it is sometimes, obedience is what we need to do. Because we're being obedient to God. And our obedience is to reach people more than it is to change the government. When we reach people, the government can change. So we have to reach people. Because people have to be saved before they can understand what is right. Because everything is right in their own eyes right now. As we're seeing so perfectly. So our purpose is to reach people for Christ. Because the only comfort, the only peace in this world is through Christ alone. And if you have not already believed in Christ and put your faith right there, please do so today. Because this world will drive you mad if you don't know that Christ is in control. You need Christ. If you have not believed, please believe today. It's simple. He came, he suffered, he died, was buried, and rose again on the third day for the forgiveness of your sins. And that is the work that is needed to give you salvation. When you believe in Christ for that, you have it. Just rest in Him, knowing He has done everything. You do nothing. It's all the work of God. Just believe today, if you have not. And you can have this peace and comfort during this crazy, wicked, weird, psychotic time. He's the only reason we can make it through. So trust in Him. Be obedient and serve correctly so people see that you're different than they are. That's what we need to do. That's what Paul is saying. He's not saying that you have to submit to every whim and fancy of the government, but you need to be obedient so people see you're different. And if we do rebel, we rebel on God's word alone. And people will see that and see that we're different. Not our emotions, not because we're angry. God's word alone. That is what Paul is telling us. And that is what we need to do. Now I'm going to pray, and then this is going to come up, and we're going to do this on the Constitution of the Church. But if anybody needs prayer, anybody needs to talk, anybody wants to know more about knowing Christ, believing in Christ, I would love to visit you. And if you don't feel comfortable coming up, fill out one of the visitor cards and drop it, and I'll come back to you this week and talk to you. Please, don't, don't miss out on knowing Christ and believing in Him for your everlasting life. Because once you do, this world doesn't matter. It's all for Him. That's all that matters. Let us pray. Father, I come to you again this morning. I thank you so much for your word, so much for your love, your grace, your mercy. And that no matter what is going on in this world, we can rest in you, knowing that you are in control, that you are of God over all, and no government, no man, no anything can be God, even if they try to say they are God, because you are God, and you are who we rest in. Lord, I pray for each person in this room that they will go out and live their life in a manner that brings honor and glory to you, that they will surrender to you, Lord, and not let things of this world drive them mad. They'll live in a way that draws people to you. It's because of you, Jesus, why we can even live, walk, breathe, do anything. And I pray that each person will rest in you, will trust you, will believe that you have accomplished all necessary for salvation. And rest in that, knowing that you 
are still working in them by the power of the Holy Spirit you have given them. Lord, I praise you once again for all you do for us, what you have done here at this church, and what you are doing here. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.